result, she quickly found a way to reschedule. Uh, in coming to the TLQP training, what I walked away with uh, was, a, was the discovery that my students are already using the Google Drive system. Uh, what they basically do is we collaborate online using the Google technology. They actually use Google Slides as a method to produce their work. Uh, what we did here was they were producing something in regards to college and career readiness. Uh, moving on, it helped me out. Uh, another reason why I jumped into this program is because my program is coming up for recertification. So to make sure that I was in compliance with the checks and balances for unit mapping and everything, I decided to jump into this program. Uh, sorry. Moving on, uh, I like to use differentiated instruction uh, as a part of search and development with the students at Transit Tech High School. And it culminates into advanced wiring skills. The reasons why I went with some small jobs and now going into the DC transit boards, putting trains together, is to show advanced wiring skills as far as what students would actually do out in service in society. We also do career exploration. Uh, Edwin Davila is a alumni of Transit Tech High School, one of my former students. He actually came out uh, sometime this week and gave a presentation uh, regarding career exploration. We actually go out, uh, this is a, a snapshot from the 14th Street train signal yard uh, for the MTA. The students got hands-on experience working with uh, signaling systems at the at this central station. And I use that as a vehicle to get my checks and balances in place as far as unit mapping. Being that I'm in career technical education, I rely on CDOS as a main standard when the students are involved with hands-on. As far as the academics are concerned, we got the ELA standards, math standards, science. We basically do it all, all right? Uh, as far as my personal growth was concerned uh, and the TLQP training, I actually mapped out outcomes that I hope students come away with as far as the first term, first market period, second market period, and third market period, and now coming into the second term, I also have some outcomes that I hope the students would get involved with. And TLQP actually put me in check to make sure that I'm accountable now for everything that's happening in my classroom. Uh, at that time, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Hudson McCoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Ms. Hudson McCoy. And I am a science teacher, STEM teacher, STEAM teacher <laughs> at Transit. That's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And um, this training really helped me. I've been a teacher for about 18 years, maybe 19 now. And um, this, this training has really helped me develop, even throughout all that, those many years, technolo technologically, as far as in the classroom. Okay, one of the biggest things that, that I went away with was the website building process. And as you can see, I kind of highlighted some things on the front page that, that, uh, that um, front page of my website, where I showed pretty much how the website can be used professionally, and then later on we'll talk about how it can be used with the students. Professionally, um, the, it ties the school's mission and vision to the instructional and unit goals and learning objectives. It allows the, the educators to communicate, to communicate and important information to all the stakeholders. So when we have our website, now everyone has access to what it is that's going on in the classroom, what it is that's going on in the school, how it all ties together. Um, we have the tabs that allows us to navigate through resources using the tabs. Um, if they want to get a, a glance into what's going on in the class, they can click a tab and go into that. Now that's what's not really easy to learn in a sense. Um, um, because I guess in, when you have an idea of a website, you see so many different websites, when you have to build it yourself, it's a whole different animal. You have to figure out what design you want. You want to figure out what makes it more user-friendly and so forth. And as you do that, you then begin to understand how the students, you, you think about how the students write when they come looking at your website, what would it, what would it be that they would need to see? And also, a, a professional, if they were looking at your website, what would it be that they would need to see? 
Okay, so it, the first grade should really summarize according to what we've learned what the left side is about. It should give a glance, a snapshot as to what everything is. Uh, it's a great place to highlight student work so you can include students either actively at work or you can include some of the work they have done. And it's a great, again, a great platform for students to now show off what they have learned. So now there's incentive for them to do more work. And of course, we learned that one of my favorite was the friendly Evoki. We were there. We had a um, an animated um, person, or or I chose a dog in, for my beautiful dog that passed away. Um, you know, it's a friendly Evoki that where we can now guide people through the website in a friendly manner. All right, and the students especially would feel comfortable through the process. Um, the website provides student access also, access to the expectations of upcoming events. It provides access to interactive activities such as later on you'll see visual like your tool. Um, resources, it's, um, web links, suggested articles, uh, reflections and assessment through survey usage, which again we learned here through the, the T help me out, LQB, there you go, <laughs> TLQB process. We, we learned surveys. Surveys, by the way, I use as um, assessment, reflections. Um, it allows the students not only, it also allows my students to start to think about rationale. I use the survey as an assessment tool, but I gave them the opportunity to put their rationale as to why they chose certain answers or why they gave certain answers. And it's, of course, the great part that we've learned, and the latest part was the undergo access through the QR scan. Okay, where students can now use the QR scans either to respond to um, a problem or question, or, and it's a quick way of being able to assess what students know, or snapshots where they can use that to go into assessing what they do know or what they don't know. And then, of course, it's all mobile ready on the cell phone. So that's what I went away from this program learning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Mr. Martinez, also a fellow electrical teacher at Transit Tech. Um, I'm fairly new to this game, so uh, you know, <laughs> recently the tools of the trade for me as an electrician were uh, screwdrivers, pliers, and things like a flashlight. So uh, it took very little time to realize that there were new tools that I had to get accustomed to using now, and also improving my teaching skills altogether. Um, the transition, and I'm sure Mr. Garcia can share that, from construction to teaching, you automatically assume that the new tools that you have are now a pencil and a pen and a piece of paper, but there's more than that. And thanks to the TLPP, we see that some of these tools, such as the uh, visual ranking tool, can also help you in the classroom. So one example that I actually did in my classroom was, um, as uh, my professor Mr. Bynum knows, we ordered some new equipment, a new curriculum entirely, it's called energy management. So I wanted to show my kids why would they need to manage their energy usage. So one good way to uh, bring about that or introduce that new unit was to use a visual ranking tool. And what it does is allow students to actually determine uh, what affects the environment the most. So um, the project name is uh, Carbon Footprint, and the students have to rank their daily activities in order from most harmful to least harmful uh, in the atmosphere. So some of the activities are like driving to school, long shower in the morning, and things like watching TV for two hours and stuff like that. So just to introduce the topic. After that, we also have a uh, second tool, which is a survey, which can be used in many ways. And um, I decided to use it more as a self-reflection. So now that they know um, that they're, okay, driving to school, watching TV too long, perhaps they're showering with you know, hot water as opposed to warm water, they're actually gonna tell us, okay, what's the average shower time? Do you turn off the lights when you leave the room? Um, what's the heating system used in your home? So now they're a little bit more mindful of the things that are happening in their own houses. And as they learn every lesson, now they realize, oh, okay, this is how this affects my life. And um, lastly is the Google Sheets, or the collaborative assignment, which is a third tool that I like to use. Um, in this case, I use it more to apply instead of a reflection now. So I would uh, give groups, uh, let's say four or five in the classroom, and give them each a no, uh, sample electricity bill. So then each group will now have to determine um, which consumer 
uh, is most, I guess, efficient in their use, who's paying more. Um, they get to learn exactly how is you know, kilowatts per hour calculated, how can you reduce that, what are some things that you can do to maybe convince your own parents and save some money and maybe they can give you that change. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it just, it just helped me motivate the students to learn you know, all the new things I want to bring about to the table. And with that, I'll pass it on. Hi, I'm Ms. Maravegas. I teach English at Transit Tech. And um, it's not always easy capturing um, my students' attention because they're so um, enthusiastic in their STEM classes and it's really hands-on. So I did a, um, a, a donor's choose project where I got a couple of laptops for my students so they would be able to actually use technology in the classroom and also bring and bridge that interdisciplinary concept. So uh, my students are working on their Chromebooks, which I procured from Donors Choose, and they're working on their, these are seniors, and they're working on their personal essays via Google Docs. So they're able to um, do their assignments, and I can look at what they're doing in real time. So I can, um, they can do their assignment, they send it to me, I can um, edit it for them, give them suggestions. I also integrated, which isn't presented here, but Google Classroom is also another great tool that I, I mean, if it wasn't for TLQP, I wouldn't have known or knew anything about uh, Google and all its great platforms that is available to uh, teachers and the world at large, so it's great. Um, form, so um, formative assessment is something that I've struggled with as a relatively newish teacher. This is my sixth year, and um, we all do summative assessment, so I was like, you know something, I need that baseline, so why can't I use technology? Wait, now Google and TLQP introduced me to this way of doing it. This is my third year, my last year of TLQP. Aww. So <laughs> I'll be back maybe with Ms. Joseph um, to, to talk about it. But it's been um, really impactful in my life as an educator. Um, and I got these guys on board um, thanks to, you know, thanks to Martha and, and the U of T over here. So uh, in order to get a sense of where students are and where we should go, they can use Google Forms. So sort of like my colleague, Ms. Martinez, mentioned, um, I use um, Google Forms as a survey, so I gave them a characterization pre-assessment, so they're able to uh, tell me what they know about characterization, and I can just take it from there, and I know how to differentiate my lessons. Um, a lot of them knew what characterization was, so I didn't have to start from square one, so that was fantastic. So I just went and rolled where they were, whereas my other class, they need a little bit more um, um, remediation in that. So I, I'm, I can assess where they are and take it from there. Um, I also use the visual ranking tool. So my students had to do, uh, as I said, the uh, personal essays for college. Um, we read excerpts from the autobiography of Malcolm X because some of the students didn't know what to write about. There's so much in your life and there's only so much you could write in your college essay. So um, I had them pare it down to a couple of things and they had to actually rank it. So maybe a childhood experience, um, an obstacle they had to overcome, um, uh, how did this teach me, an, you know, how did I learn from this, how did this teach me an important lesson? So they had to pick a focus and rank it, the personal narrative focus questions. And based on what they ranked the highest, they focused in on that and it really helped them crank out some good college essays. So that was my way of integrating technology in the classroom and the kids are more engaged and more excited about um, coming into class and, you know, and knowing that you know, yeah, I have my cell phone. Well, once in a while, we're actually going to use it to work. I also use QR code as well. So really, um, I'm really piggybacking off of what the CTE and science teachers are doing. So it's, it's a collaborative effort. And when we meet in cohort, we kind of share that information. Because um, like me and, I know me and Garcia teach up in 10th grade. So we're able to, to plan accordingly. So that's my spiel. That's my humanities English spiel. Um, just on behalf of Transit Tech, we'd like to thank the facilitators, um, Carolyn, um, Regina, who I don't see, and Abby, um, Martha from City Tech, um, our principal, Marlon Bynum, um, and, our co and my colleagues here um, for you know, the opportunity of participating in the program, and we're just better educators.